Hey, thanks for tuning in once again. I am Torgo of Torgo Entertainment. Welcome back to the Torgo Entertainment YouTube channel and welcome back to another wedding. Ready to double team your girlfriend and it stops. And it stops right there. And it continues right here because I think what my friend Mitch is trying to say is that true love is blind. I actually have two weddings to DJ this weekend. We start off on today, Saturday, with the wedding of Lacey and Patrick. This one has a little bit of backstory to it. I received this wedding through a Facebook inquiry. Unfortunately, what happened with these two, they're already married, but they're having their reception now. They got married like two months ago. This happens when work schedules don't allow you to do everything all in one go, or if you have a destination wedding, something along those lines. So we're just tackling reception today, which is fine. However, what these two told me, unfortunately, and I don't understand how this is continuing to be a thing, is their DJ canceled on them about a month before the wedding actually happened. And this is the second time this has happened to them. So I am the third DJ they have hired to do this wedding and I don't understand where this business idea comes from. Well, that's not entirely true. I think I understand why these scumbags do this. You book more than one event on a day and then you decide, oh, I'm just gonna do the one that pays the most and then you just kind of kick the other ones to the curb, disregarding any attachment you may have to that. And unfortunately, I've seen in the nine years I've done this professionally as a wedding DJ, this happens far more often than you would think, especially with single op businesses. And I don't understand how people think they can get away with this. I've never done that. Not to put myself up on a pedestal or anything like that. But if you book an event, that's your event. Part of what the contract entails is that you are secured to do that and you're not gonna ditch them to do something else. This just seems like common sense to me. This is the first casual wedding I've done in quite some time. They said you don't have to dress up. I'm probably gonna wear, you know, at least the jacket anyway, along with just the shirt, no tie for sure. Because even though it's casual, I still think it looks weird at a wedding when, you know, the DJ shows up in like a polo shirt. I don't want to come off as looking like some guy who just came off the street. You still have to represent yourself properly. But even though it's just a reception, even though they've already been married, and even though this is at an American Legion, which this is only the second time I've done a wedding at an American Legion. The first one was five or six years ago, and that one, I remember it being okay, but the room was particularly dark. This one isn't quite as bad. We have a lot of space to deal with, but we have a nice little stage area. And in fact, they've requested up lighting for this wedding. We have 12 up lights that we're gonna throw around the room. Legions make it a little tricky because a lot of the decor in there consists of plastic and recognizing people, recognizing members. So you don't want to interfere with that too much, which is why I suggested we don't really go with more than 12 because just having spots of light on a wall that's covered with plaques is really not gonna, it's gonna look tacky. It's gonna take away from the natural ambience of the room. Very few formalities will take place during this wedding. All we have is a first dance. There's no grand entrance. There's no real toasts. There's no parent dances, all we have, and their song list had two songs on it. First dance, last dance. Couldn't ask for anything simpler. But again, simple does not mean we get to take it easy. What American Legion are we going to? Let's go to the map. Now this is gonna sound silly to those of you not in the area, but it's pronounced Camp Bell. I know it looks like Campbell, like the soup company, but it's Camp Bell, and it's about 15 minutes away really simple drive. I don't know how well you can pick it up on the microphone on my camera right now, but it's raining and of course every DJ knows setting up in the rain is not the most desirable thing to do. But it's a relatively early wedding. The reception starts at two o'clock. So we have three hours to get there, set everything up and we're good to go. Phil's coming along with me this time because he's helping me tomorrow for that wedding. That's gonna be a whole different beast entirely. So stay tuned for gig log number seven. I haven't done this in a couple of gig logs, but I'm actually going to try a new piece of, I hesitate to say equipment, but we're trying something new and it's something I've seen a lot of people suggest online, so we're going to try it out and that is an anti-fatigue mat. I can't tell you how many times I'll DJ an event and I'll have, you know, you just stand up for six or seven hours. If you see a DJ sitting down, if they are physically capable of standing for that period of time, 
they're endless, they're eating, there's no excuse. You need to stand for pretty much the entire time. You're getting paid enough, you can stand up. And I know that it's hard on people's feet, especially when they're in dress shoes. So a lot of people have been talking about getting anti-fatigue mats. Now I know that the anti-fatigue is actually referring to the fatigue that it won't have on the floor and not necessarily on the person. But I got a pretty good deal on this anti-fatigue mat. I grabbed it from Home Depot, it was like $50. So we're gonna check it out and see if it actually helps with my feet. Because I do love standing up. Well, that's a lie, who loves standing up? The idea behind the anti-fatigue mat is when you stand up for extended periods of time while you DJ, it obviously raises a little bit of trouble on your feet and you need to take care of your feet. A lot of DJs don't take care of their ears, a lot of DJs don't take care of their feet. So I'm trying that this time around because these are my black dress shoes that I always wear at weddings and they're actually, they're steel toe dress shoes. I don't know that they're not terribly common but I would highly recommend picking these up. Because that way, you know, they're work shoes, but they don't look like work shoes. I mean, it looks like a standard dress shoe. Nothing too weird about that, by the way. Ten and a half. And we're gonna try combining the dress shoes. And the black ones, I tend to have more problems with my feet hurting at the end of the night than the brown ones. And that's just because I've been up on my feet for quite a bit of time. And I will tell you the results afterwards. And I'll see you at the American Legion. Let's go. In all the excitement of setting up for this wedding, we never got the video B-roll of the setup for the gig log, unfortunately, so I have to show this static image. But if you've seen the past gig logs I've had, you have a general idea of what we have. We have the Dragon frontboard facade. We have my QSC 10.2 speakers. We have my glow totems. On top of those, we have my moving heads, which are, of course, the ADJ Pocket Pros. And we have some up lighting behind all of those lights. We have the ADJ hex bar behind the facade. Behind the booth, we have my mixing board, which is, of course, the Pioneer DDJ SX2. We also have the wireless microphone setup that I showed off back in May. Nothing too out of the ordinary. We also have to the side, I don't know if you can see it next to that table, but we have my two EVZXA1 12 inch subwoofers. Those are hanging out there. And if we take a look from the bird's eye view of the DJ booth, we have the view of where the up lighting went. So overall, not too bad. I hope you're ready. There's one thing we have left to do, and that's level up. Kind of. Not as much as we you normally do, but you know, level up all the same. Well, we're here. We have our testy pad. It's okay. Let's go.
back the morning after. That wedding turned out all right. We got more people dancing than I thought that we would have. The couple were extremely happy. People were a little confused, thinking, why did it need to go five hours? Some people said that they thought it would end at four o'clock instead of seven o'clock. And it was definitely more of a barbecue or picnic atmosphere than a wedding, which happens when the couple got married a couple months before. The other thing that kind of prevented the dance floor from really blowing up is there were a bunch of kids. I think about 15 kids were there at the wedding and they were playing with bouncy balls and kept coming up on stage and trying to knock over the facade, which is a terrifying experience for anybody who was there. DJs know that kids aren't the greatest for dance floors. But overall, it went pretty well. As long as the couple was happy, that's what matters. When it comes to the anti-fatigue mats, to be completely honest, I didn't really notice any difference between having the mat there and not having the mat there. I mean, I guess it feels good in the time because you're standing on a cushion, but other than that, is it a necessary investment for your business? I would say no. You're not gonna hurt yourself by having it, but don't break your back to try and get one. As always, I leave a playlist of all the songs that we played at the end of this video. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Torgo of Torgo Entertainment, and we'll see you at the next gig. Take care. The couple said 15. The couple said 15. They're like six kids.